welcome to Tell Me Your Story. I'm Richard Dugan, your host. We're bringing you new paradigms for a new world, giving you choices and knowledge of those choices to help make your dreams come true. I'm Richard Dugan, as I said, and uh, we uh, come your way at various times during the week. We've got podcasts, we have a video cast. Uh, we have an event we want you to participate in, and if you're able to support us, we'll tell you about that later, because I want to get into our conversation with our guest, who's going to talk to us about how you can boost your immune system, heal your gut, and unlock your mental, emotional, and I love this one, of course, spiritual health. Our guest is, he's a doctor. He's an MD. His name is Peter Kozlowski, and I want to thank you for joining us here on the program as we shared when we first started talking, all the way from a very sought-after part of our country right now, just because of the scenery, if nothing more, and the lifestyle, Wyoming, the wide-open plains of Wyoming. Thank you for being with us. It's actually Bozeman, Montana. Montana. Well, you're close Next enough. Next door to Wyoming. It's all the same area, We're, okay? Yes. <laughs> We're connected. <laughs> Montana and Wyoming and Nebraska, North and South Dakota. I, I still haven't figured out <clears throat> why they just didn't make it one state and just call it Dakota. <laughs> why North and South? But, yeah. you know, that's another story for a different show. But it's great to have you with us all the way from Montana and uh, you shared with us, and I think this is relevant. You shared with me that uh, you moved there from Chicago, uh, getting out of the big city, as it were. N not that there's necessarily anything wrong with the big city. Heck, I, I was born and raised in Phoenix, Arizona, and as I was growing up, it was the 15th largest uh, city in the country, and 15 ain't that far away from one. So, uh, and I don't know where they rank now, uh, but ne needless to say. And part of what we're going to talk about has a little bit to do with that, primarily because of what we have access to. Now, you have a book. It's entitled, it's entitled, um, uh, let's see, Unfunk Your Gut. It's a functional uh, medicine guide. Let me ask you about that. What kind of medicine are we talking about? The, the opposite of traditional medicine. Ah, uh, there you go. Alternative. <laughs> we'll call alternative. it alternative. Yeah, we can, we can label it alternative. And that covers, and we talk about alternative medicine all of the time. I myself uh, am a, uh, a Reiki master. Uh, one of the things, though, that I came up with uh, during one of the programs that I kind of realized as we were talking about the body's chemistry, and of course, everybody uh, in the in the country, well, not everybody, but some people, eh, they're not real happy with <clears throat> what we call the traditional, I'm using your word there, pharmaceutical industry. But the reality is we have our own pharmaceutical company built right inside of us. The, the issue, though, is are we adding the right chemistry to our bodies in order for that pharmaceutical company to manufacture the, I'm going to say chemistry rather than drugs, uh, in order for us to be a properly functional individuals. And that's really where you're coming from as well, isn't it? Yes, sir. Absolutely. So talk to us about this aspect. First of all, what's your uh, area of specialty as, as an MD? So I went to residency for family practice and I was a family practice resident. I graduated family practice residency. I graduated from, I did the board exams, um, but very early on in my career, I was introduced to functional medicine. Um, I thought it was a hoax. I thought it was a joke when I first heard about it. Um, the way it, it went for me is as a family practice resident, you train every day with different doctors. You have different attendings who are your mentors and you learn cardiology and you deliver babies and you, uh, work with patients in the hospital and you attend surgeries and you're learning from all these different people. And we had one doctor that every time he would work in the hospital with us, he would start the hospitalized patient on a multivitamin and vitamin D. And we thought it was a joke. 
We used to make fun of him. As interns, you're known as doing the scut work, which is putting in all the orders. And we would have to be writing orders for these supplements. And we, we were like, this is such a waste of time. And then myself, I got sick. Um, I mean, I was sick going into it. My disease, uh, most just FYI, most physicians that start as an MD and then go to functional medicine, it's because they got sick themselves and couldn't get better. My disease is a mental disease uh, of alcoholism. And I tried to stop drinking when I started residency and I, I couldn't, I didn't know how to deal with life. Um, I never thought I had a problem with alcohol because I was extremely successful and meeting all my priorities, but on my free time, I couldn't get it under control. So I took a six week break from residency and I went to a treatment program that had nothing to do with alcohol. It was all about why, why do you drink? And it was uh, hours and hours of group therapy. There was yoga, meditation, acupuncture, exercise, talk therapy, all these things that I, I thought were full of crap. And I just, I was brainwashed. I was that, that my general belief is that we come out of medical school and residency brainwashed by the drug industry. So this was kind of my opening seeing like, wow, all these alternative things are helping me stay sober. And then I went back to residency, went back to work. And one day I asked Dr. Batra, the guy that I was talking about, Hey, why do you do this? Why are you giving everybody multivitamins and, and vitamin D? And, um, he said it's I'm because I'm studying something called functional medicine. And he took me to the website and it, I, I was impressed right away. It was the root cause. So we are taught as traditional doctors to listen to you, hear what symptoms you have, give you a diagnosis and then give you a pill for that diagnosis. That, that that's basically it when it comes to chronic disease. And as a functional medicine doctor, I was taught how to listen to you, put together your story on a timeline, starting from the time before you were born when you were um, in utero, up until whenever you meet me, whether that's at three years old or at 75 years old, and figure out the why, the underlying cause. Mm -hmm. And in general, it's what does your body have too much of? And what does your body not have enough of? And too much is inflammation. And that comes from our food supply, our processed food, um, our genetically modified food. It comes from environmental toxins like lead and mercury and it, mycotoxins from mold. Um, what do you not have enough of? Not enough self-care, not enough self-love, um, not enough nutrition, not enough thyroid, not enough progesterone, not enough testosterone. And so we do testing uh, typically after an initial visit with me. So we do a bunch of testing and we look for the imbalances and through healing the imbalances, we help the person heal the disease. And for a lot of people, it sounds nuts that, you know, when they come to me for eczema and the first thing I start talking to them is about their gut health, they, they're very confused frequently. It's like, well, I'm talking, I'm here for my skin issues. Like, why are you talking about my gut? And Hippocrates said it 3000 years ago. He said, all disease begins in the gut. He knew that before we knew everything that we know now. And basically everything we've done since he said that is destroy our guts. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the reason why uh, chronic disease is skyrocketing. I would say also that one of the other uh, <clears throat> culprits in this uh, dynamic is uh, nowadays is the Internet. Uh, because you can come up with, uh, oh, let's just say I have a hangnail. Oh, God, it's got to be something more than that. So I go on the Internet and I start looking up everything to do with what causes it, you know, and and all of a sudden we have hypochondriacs all over the place because they think they have this and that and the other thing. I that, might... That's the first chapter of my book yeah. is, is basically kind of making fun of what you can convince yourself within a matter of minutes of being on the Internet. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I uh, agree with and I do propagate this uh, quote uh, by one of our uh, one of our great presidents in history who said uh, he said Abraham Lincoln said, don't trust anything you read on the Internet. So uh, <laughs> you'll find that on the Internet, too. Uh, but I find this fascinating that um, 
when now <clears throat> I, I've shared this with folks on the program before and I will share it with you now since you've not heard it and I'll keep it brief ladies and gentlemen who've heard it before uh, in the summer of 2021 a correction 2020 in the summer of 2020 I was diagnosed uh, late July with type 2 diabetes now years before on occasion, I would get my blood work back and I would be pre-diabetic. Mm -hmm. No big deal. Don't, you know, got to go crazy or anything. Just, you know, maybe, you know, back off a little bit on the sugars, what have you. But there I was. Uh, Richard, you have type 2 diabetes. Boom. Now, the first symptom that I was aware of but didn't put it together right away was I was drinking a lot of water and peeing a lot, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. My wife says, uh, we're going to go see your doctor. Get in there right away. So we did. And he, my A1C was 11.2. Wow. Yeah. And uh, he said that your average blood sugar reading per day was between 275 and 300. Now, my understanding from the research that I've done since was is that you want to have it between anywhere between, and it's going to fluctuate, between 80 and 120. 130 is still okay, but that's kind of, the, and that's a big range. It's huge, mm -hmm. but, but just like blood pressure, blood sugar fluctuates as you go through your days and weeks and months. But the A1C reading tracks what? Go back, goes back three months, I believe, something like that. After I got over the initial shock, you know, the doc says, well, uh, Richard, you know, it's going to be a long, long journey, long journey for you. And he told me this story about one of his patients who uh, was able to bring his A1C down, his, uh, his uh, blood sugar down to, his A1C down to, what was it, uh, like 6, 7.5 or 6.9 or something like that. He did it in six months. Now, I knew how I had gotten there. It was a pandemic. What did everybody go to when they were told to be locked down? They went to comfort foods. And what do comfort foods have? Sugar and carbs, which of course turn into sugar. I said, no, no doc, it's not. It's not gonna take me long. So I was diagnosed on the 24th of July, 2020. Mm -hmm. My blood sugar, having a meter now to check every so while, you know, I was told to check maybe once or twice a day initially. Mm -hmm. I went down to once a day and so forth. By mid-September, I was down to normal. Mid-September. Wow. Good for you. October 31st, or is it, it might have been November 1st, I went in for my uh, blood work and check and everything. Normal, 5.7 A1C. Uh, the following February, another check, 5.7. Uh, I've got another one coming up uh, 2022 in September, uh, and I'm sure it's going to be normal too. Now, you want to ask you a question? Yes, sir. Did your doctor over these months that you're talking about since the diagnosis or the years leading up to it, was he ever monitoring your fasting insulin levels? To the best of my knowledge, uh, no, I don't believe so. It's not a standard of care in, mm -hmm. in the traditional medicine model. And, and that kind of brings up the point that we're a reactive society, right? We wait yes. till something goes wrong and then we try to fix it. Mm -hmm. I, when I'm working with my patients, one of the tests that I like to run on people regularly is fasting insulin. Because what is type 2 diabetes? It is when your insulin stops working. So what starts happening before type 2 diabetes? Your insulin starts going up. So a normal range is typically between two and like 19.5 on a, a fasting insulin test. And I like to keep my patients in a range between two and five as a pre pre, I call it like a pre pre diabetes marker. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't understand really why it's standard of care. Um, in general, usually when I can't figure out why we don't do something in regular medicine, it's usually because there's not a medication to treat it. Mm -hmm. And if, if you were in pre pre diabetes, they wouldn't put you on a medication. So I don't think they would know what to do with you. But 
um, that, that would be an interesting, I, I would personally ask if he could start monitoring your fasting insulin uh, with your A1C so you can see how high it is because when it starts going too high, you know you're on your way to high blood sugars. Well, I will tell you that there was one major factor that played into this. Now, we went back, my wife and I went back to, I will call it the diet, uh, the way we ate prior to the pandemic. <clears throat> that was the first thing. But the biggest change that I have made, and thus far to this day and this conversation we are having, the 23rd of July was the last time I had a soda, a soft drink. Okay? It was the last time. Now, I used to consume them when I was bicycling everywhere, which is how I got around back in Phoenix. And I delivered newspapers and then in high school and then I bicycled to and from work and all this kind of stuff. And I actually built a cup holder on my bicycle to hold one of those 32 ounce big old big gulp things. And I'd go into the 7-Eleven or I'd go into the Circle K or what have you, convenience store, and I'd fill her up with ice and then I'd fill her up with Pepsi or Coke or whatever it was. And I would be bicycling. Now, I didn't, I wasn't aware that I was drinking a lot and peeing a lot at that time, but then again, I was also exercising. I was out there moving and, and all that stuff. So back then, it probably wasn't an issue, but the desire for the fizz, not the sugar, more the fizz than anything else. So the 23rd of July, 2020, last time, last one. What, did I, what I supplement it with? Now, bear in mind, someone's going to say, but Richard... Hey, one step at a time. I switched to the sparkling flavored waters. Bubbly? Sparkling. Yeah. Yep. Now, granted, what I'm drinking is coming out of, oh my God, dirty word here, a plastic bottle, as I said, one step at a time. Okay? Right. right. So, um, yeah, and that's what I, and I'll, I'll mix the flavors. Uh, I might even mix it with, I'm, it may be, I may even use it as a mixer for, uh, I like pineapple vodka. And they've got a pineapple coconut flavored sparkling water. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I told the doctor it wasn't going to be a long ride. And by the way, when was the last time you used the word to, with one of your patients and their turnaround, you've used the word miraculous or miracle? that my doctor used that with me it i don't know that i use it that much i mean i i think that what we see in functional medicine is miraculous um but you know so i guess i tell patients you know patients for a motivation like hey this is what this person did and this is what happened to them sure. but i don't know that mir miraculous is in my vocabulary that much well, I was surprised that he used it, and I'm hoping now that when he gets somebody else coming in there with type 2 diabetes, he will tell my story that I did it in a month and a half. It can be done. but and it doesn't it, have to be miraculous. It, it, no, it, 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 it doesn't. Yeah. But, but here's the kicker, uh, and that is that as we're, as we're going through this process in August and September and October and even to this day, and these... Um, uh, these uh, commercials come on for the type 2 diabetes pills to reduce your A1C and so forth down to, and they say, seven. I, I have to sit there and, and I am uh, uh, stunned, but I chuckle at the same time. Now, was I put on metformin? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He told me to take two a day. Mm -hmm. I did for about three weeks. But as I noticed my blood sugar levels coming down, I went to one. And there wasn't a significant change in the decline of the blood sugar readings. So I stayed on one. When I went in for that February check, which was the second time he checked and it was normal, he says, you can go down to one. So I stopped taking metformin altogether. <laughs> but I've never told him that I self-prescribed in the reverse. <laughs> and I now have like... Uh, 200 metformin tablets wow good so for you take those and put those in that big blue bin that we've got here uh, in california where you get rid of prescription drugs uh. 
one of the things that I want to ask you about, uh, because we kind of talk about this, and it's, it's, to me it's related because I want to get to this particular area. You're talking about the mental, emotional, and spiritual health of the human being, mm-hmm. the, the, as well as the physical. Let's not, let's not forget that. Right. But the, the, I can certainly understand the mental and the emotional due to the chemistry, as, as I mentioned earlier in the program. How do, does, th- does this whole aspect of the gut and getting the chemistry back into the proper homeostasis, if that's the correct word, how does that impact uh, the spiritual health of a person? So it, it's a two-way highway, and this, this is kind of my passion to talk about is the gut-brain connection and, and what, is, what is it? What exactly, what, why? Why does it work the way it does? And when it's interesting because of the internet, people are out there and convinced that if they just find the right diet or if they find the right supplements or if they find the right testing, if they find the right protocol, they're going to heal. And when I bring up their mental, emotional, spiritual health, they usually tell me to F off or look away or just kind of shut down. (laughs) And they're like, that's not why I'm here. Yeah. And I, and I, I said, I, I'm, I'm, you know, with what I've been through in my own life, I'm like, I don't really care if that's not why you're here. You're here to heal and you're here for my advice. And I promise you that if you don't make your mental, emotional, spiritual health, the focus of your health, you're not going to heal. You can follow whatever diet you want. You can follow whatever uh, supplement regimen you want. You're not going to get better. And when it comes to the gut, So your gut is a tube that starts with the mouth and ends with the anus. It has openings on both ends. Mm -hmm. The first thing I like to teach people about the gut is that the inside of the gut is actually considered outside of the body. So if you swallow something and poop it out, it's never been in your body. And a lot of people have heard this term leaky gut. Your gut is a barrier. It's the entryway into your body. So when something crosses across the gut barrier and into the blood, it's now in your body. And that's why Hippocrates said all disease begins in the gut, because things get the environment gets into our bodies through our gut. It's it's what works like the skin. The difference is, is the skin is three layers of cells. It's very thick. The gut is a single layer of cells, very thin. So it's much easier for things to get in through the gut but people wash their hands 10 times a day, but then they throw anything in their gut tube. And so that, that's kind of the mo- first thing that a lot of people don't, under- don't know about the gut. We're not taught about it. But the, the, that tube that we're talking about is surrounded by a nervous system called the enteric nervous system. This nervous system has more neurons than your brain does. So the, the whole tube is surrounded by a nervous system. That nervous system, the enteric of your gut, is connected to your brain by your vagus nerve. We have 12 cranial nerves. They all do different things. Cranial nerve number 10 is called your vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is what I tell people is the key to your gut health. Why? So there is a two-way street. The, The brain sends information down the vagus nerve to the gut. And then the gut sends information back up the vagus nerve to the brain. And so there's, there's this constant communication. Your vagus nerve runs on what is called your autonomic nervous system, which means automatic. It is basically how we have gone through evolution. There's the sympathetic response and the parasympathetic response. You don't think about your autonomic nervous system. It's just happening in the background. Well, sympathetic response was designed when you're out in the mountains and you see a grizzly bear, the blood and energy go to your brain and muscles to figure out how to survive, right? You're in a life or death situation and your body has adapted to to help you survive. If you do survive and you're sitting there eating, you're in parasympathetic response. The blood and energy go to your gut. When the sympathetic nervous system is activated, we sh- the, the signals that our brain tells our gut is, hey, don't make stomach acid. Don't digest your food. Hey, don't keep a tight gut lining. So your gut lining can get leaky and then toxins can get in. 
And then the other thing that happens that we talk about the most is your microbiome. All of us have three to five pounds of bacteria growing inside of us. Your microbiome is shut down by being stressed out, right? So what has happened, I think, and it's obviously been made worse by the pandemic, is people are living as if they're running from a bear 24 mm. seven. The first thing we do is we, we wake up and we check our phone. And whether it's you go to social media first or you go to the news first or your email or your texts or your calls, the right away for most people, it's not a relaxing environment. It's a, okay, fight or flight, sympathetic nervous system. The mind right away tells the gut, we don't need you today. You're not going to operate today. So good luck. We, we need to survive. And when you live that way, chronically for for some people disease can onset in three months for some people it could take 50 years before the issues start but that that's the connection and that's why i try to teach people i'm like you're i can give you the right testing i could diagnose you with candida and SIBO and dysbiosis and low stomach acid and, and maldigestion and all this stuff but if you mentally get in the way of what we're trying to do you're never going to heal mm. and the, one of my favorite things that I learned through recovery, I had a therapist tell me that uh, trauma is anything less than nurturing. And most of us think of trauma as violence and, and war and things like that. Trauma from this definition can be as, something as simple as coming home from school when you're five years old and your parents are working so they don't have time to pay attention to you. That sets off a signal of I'm not good enough which sends the brain then tells the gut, hey, you need to slow down. You're, you're taking up too much energy. We need to survive. And then, you know, the, the child could start having symptoms or they come into my office at 25 and they've been diagnosed with Hashimoto's or 40 and rheumatoid arthritis. But it started with just little traumas and, and our lack of focus on the mental, emotional and spiritual part. Um, and, and I fully understand, like, I, I don't ever judge anyone because I've been through hell and back that why they don't want to work on it, why they don't want to look at their relationship with their parents or with their spouse or with what happened to them as a kid. Like it, it, it sucks. It's a lot easier to get a, to be on a strict diet, taking 20 supplements a day and hoping that you're going to get better. But, and, and this is not the story for everybody, but the, this is what I've seen over and over in the years is when I'm, I'm a perfectionist. So I only think about my patients that don't get better. And what have I seen over the last 10 years? It's that constant focus of just turning me off when I try to bring up that mental, emotional, spiritual component. So that's why I try to teach people the science behind it. Because for me, when I can make sense of things, I can then work on them. And so when I think when someone understands the vagus nerve, the connection between the brain and the gut, it can allow them to start thinking like, okay, maybe I do need to do more than diet or supplements to heal my chronic disease. Dr. Peter Kosolowski is my guest. His book is called Unfunk Your Gut, a functional medicine guide. We certainly hope that you'll get a copy to help boost your immune system, heal your gut, and unlock your mental, emotional, and spiritual health as we continue our conversation here on Tell Me Your Story. I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and it is really a pleasure to have this conversation with Dr. Kozlowski. And uh, I, you know, as you're talking about all of these aspects, and certainly every individual is, a, is different. Yes. It's so one of my uh, arguments, um, not really an argument, it's more of a discussion I have with my doctor who has a great, shall we say, bedside manner. Uh -huh. uh, he's very optimistic, very positive, but he's also very truthful. You know, uh -huh. he's going to lay it out for me. He says, look, okay, your, your cholesterol might be just you know, a tad high or a tad, you know, different things of this nature. I mean, he, was, he didn't hold back when he told me I was type 2 diabetic. He might, have, might as well have told me I had cancer because I would have been in shock just as well, but would have said, well, you know what? Uh, okay, well, let's, let's, let's figure out the, the, a course of action here. And of course, uh, my intuition was already telling me the course of action. And I had made that commitment many times, kind of like a smoker. I can quit any time I want drinking sodas, you know? 
And I did. I quit many times <laughs> uh, until now. Now, I can still go out there today and I can pick up a soda. I can go out and buy a small bottle of. And I will tell you that it is not going to lead to me drinking even more. Because I've actually, as I said before, it wasn't the sugar, the sweet, even though I loved the sweet at the time. It was the fizz. I liked that that fizziness in the mouth. There was something about that. And someone said to me, well, but Richard, do you understand that the nitrogen, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, hey, look, one step at a time, please. Just <laughs> stop it. But as I said, we're all individuals. Yes. We're all different. I've been diagnosed for many years, as primarily since I moved to California to Santa Barbara with high blood pressure. <laughs> and my mother says, well, Richard, it runs in the family. And I'm going, okay, it may run in the family, but that doesn't mean that uh, I have to keep it. Now, <laughs> am I taking the medications required? Yes, because the alternative at present, at present, is uh, if I don't, and my blood pressure, I, I've had a high blood pressure of 184 over 120 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, my wife says, you're in the stroke zone. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people, I've met people who've had strokes and they didn't fully recover. And I'm thinking, man, I don't, uh, for the time being, this is what I'm going to do. All right. But you, you mentioned something that I think uh, many of our programmers, many of our guests who talk about health, uh, refer to as sort of the root cause of, I'll say, 99% of all that ails us as a society as well as individuals is inflammation. Yes. And they think that it only happens on the outside. When you gain weight, you don't gain weight just on the outside. You gain it on the inside too. And so when you get inflammation... Uh, you're compressing nerves, you're compressing veins and arteries, you're compressing every aspect of your body with that pressure, with that inflammation. And there was one area that I didn't even, I wasn't aware of. Now, as a kid, I hated tomatoes. Today, I love them. I can't get enough of them. They're delicious. Well, by, uh, although I'll, I'll put avocados above them. But anyway. I did not know that the seeds of the tomato caused inflammation. Last night, my wife made us grilled cheese sandwich with avocado and tomato. And the first thing she did when she sliced open that tomato, scooped out the seeds. And I think that's one of the problems is that as much information as, as there is out there on the Internet, uh, people don't know what to believe. Right. And it's like, man, I wish there was a source we could go to that we could genuinely trust that a would give us today's accurate information, but also acknowledge, hey, but we're still researching. This might change tomorrow, but this is where we're at today. Talk to us about the impact of this this chronic issue we call inflammation so that is the the, the core right and the, that that is the core of functional medicine is identifying inflammation and i think one of the things um two things about me is that i i'm like your doctor I, i'm extremely blunt with my patients i i don't sugarcoat things um uh, i'm a first generation american from poland uh, that Eastern European bluntness is, is still in me. Um, but the other thing, so inflammation is very difficult to test for, right? People are like, well, I want to do a test for inflammation. And, and in traditional medicine, we have what's called a CRP, a C-reactive protein. We have sedimentation rate. And that those are kind of the two main markers we have for inflammation. So it's very hard for people to figure out because if you go to your doctor, unless you're in, in, a, in an extreme accident or a very acute flare of some kind of autoimmune disease, your CRP and sedimentation rate are probably not going to be elevated, but you still might be very inflamed. And that, that's the whole goal of what we do is to try to identify it. And so being through recovery, my, my other focus, so that's what I wanted to say was 
I like to keep things as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. For me, my recovery, I have to keep things simple. For my patients, I, I like to try to keep things simple. So there are basically five major areas that I look for inflammation. And number one is food. And I, I look at food sensitivities, which is something I talk about quite a bit in the book and give recipes for and to figure all that out. Number two is your gut health because your gut can be very inflamed, but you don't have symptoms of it. So someone can have an inflamed gut, but they don't have bloating and IBS and constipation and diarrhea. But that doesn't mean that there's not some bad bacteria growing in your gut or you're not digesting. The number three area that I would look is environmental toxins. And like I said earlier, the main ones that I find, heavy metals, mold, then there's things like glyphosate and the styrenes and the organophosphates, insecticides. We can test your body for all those levels. Um, the fourth area is hormone. Hormone imbalances don't much so much create inflammation. They're a product of inflammation. Chronic inflammation will damage your hormones. And then the fifth one is the mental, emotional, spiritual part. And, and that causes the release of cortisol. And cortisol is one of the two hormones that you don't want elevated in your body because it causes blood sugar to rise and then everything falls apart. Mm. So to keep things very simple, those are the five areas that I look for inflammation. So if somebody's asking me, do I have inflammation? I can't, I can't run a test that says yes. I can run a test that says, hey, your gut is screwed up or hey, you've got a bunch of lead in your body or hey, your body's full of mold. So that is something that creates inflammation. So I'm going to go ahead and assume you have inflammation since I can't really prove it any other way. We know that you don't want a bunch of heavy metals in your body. You don't want an imbalanced microbiome. You don't want a very inflammatory diet. So through testing those things, we can identify the sources of inflammation, but to actually test for it, especially if you go to your traditional doctor, they're going to do a CRP and a sedate. And, and it's, it, they're going to tell you, no, you're, you, you don't have inflammation mm. and you might come to me. I run four tests on you and I, I let you know that you're completely screwed up. Like everything is imbalanced. Yeah. Dr. Peter Kozlowski is our guest and his book is his latest book is unfunk your gut. It is a functional, <laughs> functional medicine guide to help you boost your, your immune system uh, heal your gut and unlock your mental, emotional, and spiritual health as we are talking here on Tell Me Your Story. I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and I want to ask you, Dr. Kozlowski, um, about um, the, the correlation between a couple of diseases or conditions that I think right now, coming out of the pandemic because i do believe we are coming out of the pandemic whether or not we ever see the disappearance of COVID or not they say it's going to be with us forever all right mm -hmm. just like influenza and some other things but what about the correlation between some of these different conditions such as heart disease i'm only i'm not going to mention a bunch just maybe three sure. heart disease high blood pressure and high blood sugar. What uh, what uh, are, are uh, have there been any studies showing any kind of a correlation between any one, two, or all three of these particular ones, or others that if we just took care of as as you're proposing here, took care of our gut, all right, we we would be able to maybe not completely eliminate but at least reduce the risks because it's been said that we all have the potential for many of these diseases or conditions doesn't mean we're going to get them but depending upon what we do and what we put in our as you put it our gut hole uh <laughs> depending upon what we put there but I also believe, too, through other five senses as well, our, 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 our eyes and our ears, you know, that um, we, we could go a long way to, uh, to, to make ourselves and our world a better place. 
I, I think the, the connection starts with food, with what we're eating, right? And mm -hmm. being a, a first generation American, my, as a kid, my primary goal was to try to fit in, right? I, I wanted to fit in and be an American. And my parents were cooking Polish food and my parents were speaking Polish in the house. And I was watching cartoons and they were advertising Lunchables and pizza and McDonald's and Happy Meals and all this stuff. So my way that, that I, one of the ways that I like assimilated into American culture was through eating like what I, what they were showing me on TV and in mm -hmm. shows. And that's a great recipe to develop diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, all of it, because that food, our bodies, everything that functions in our body, whether it's your immune system or your thyroid or your brain is dependent on what we're putting into it. Right. So if I'm putting into it a, a, a big meal, uh, like a, I forget what they used to call it at, at McDonald's, the, the, the big breakfast, and then for lunch, I'm going to Subway. And then for dinner, uh, I'm going to Taco Bell. All, all this stuff is, it's not giving my body any information or any support to function properly. Mm -hmm. And our bodies are amazing because people can go on like that for 40, 50, 60 years and, and not get sick, right? Some people get sick very young, but some people can live like that forever and they never have a problem. Which, which just shows, I always talk about how resilient our bodies are. Like they're amazing how hard they fight to keep us alive. But when you're, you're putting in that bad information, not only is it lacking nutrients, but it's, it's telling your body to attack that food. It's creating more fat. When you're, you're fat, you're, they call it adip, adipocytes, your fat cells actually release more inflammation. So the more you gain weight, the more inflammation that's released. Like one of the things that a lot of people that drink a lot of pop, I'm from the Midwest, um, are being diagnosed with is fatty liver, which is basically a bunch of fat around your liver. Well, that is sending inflammation into your liver. The, those cells surrounding your liver are now inflaming your liver. And then you're smoking or drinking or stressed out or eating an inflammatory diet. And it's just this constant onslaught. And so that's what we need to break out of. And, and one of the best ways to do it is through diet. It, I think the diet is a core. I mean, it, it, to me, I feel like the food industry and the uh, pharmaceutical industry are very connected. Um, I've also found it interesting that the price of every single thing in this world is going up, but you can still go to Wendy's and get a Baconator for a dollar. You look at the fast food places, they seem to be the only places where prices aren't rising. Mm -hmm. and that's going to encourage people to eat more of that stuff, which is going to give you heart disease, which is going to end you up in your doctor and you're going to need more pills. And, and the, the cycle kind of just keeps going and going. Um, so keeping it simple, because there's so many diets out there, that's one of the things I make fun of is like, one day you have to be vegan, the next day you have to be carnivore, the next day you're keto. And if you're keto, then you have to be doing CrossFit. And it's just this constant, like, you know, it, it to me, it's just people trying to make money off of their next great scheme. Yeah. For me, I, that, that's not my intention. Um, it, so the basic advice that I try to give people to start with is eat nine to 12 servings of vegetables and fruit a day. The average American eats one to three. So if you take your standard American diet breakfast, let's say you're having pancakes or a breakfast sandwich or um, bacon and eggs, no vegetables, right? No fruit. Then you have lunch and you're having a sub sandwich, which has iceberg lettuce, which is the only vegetable that doesn't have any nutritional value at all. And maybe <laughs> two slices of tomatoes, right? And that's your, with some chips and, and a pop. And then dinner is a piece of meat with potatoes and a side of broccoli or green beans. So there's our one serving of vegetables and fruit a day. Mm -hmm. One of the recipes I give in my book is we call it the breakfast salad club eat a salad for breakfast. We have a cooked salad, we have a raw salad. Um, but if you don't get 
those, if you don't start balancing out those servings of vegetables and fruit a day, you're not going to be able to get to nine to 12 servings. But the bigger point of it is why it works is when you're eating that many vegetables and fruit, you know, you don't have room for the other junk, right? There's not like you're full because you're eating so much of healthy things that are supporting your body. So it's, it's again, that's, it's very simple, but it's very different than the way we're taught to eat in America. You know, it's, it's very interesting how, um, this whole health issue is, 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 uh, it's just, it's one of the things that is absolutely consuming us. And, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I will say that the coincidences are unmistakable, uh, that you certainly could read into it, a uh, conspiracy. And I look at it this way. When the, uh, and of course we've been eating and living the way we've been living for decades. Okay. So we have uh, a pandemic that's called. All right, everybody, stay at home. If you have to go out, just send one person, wear a mask, da 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 da. And again, we go to the comfort foods, whether it's at the fast food restaurant or at the grocery store, where I was always told shop from the ends of the store or the back of the store. Don't mm-hmm. shop in the middle because that's where all the processed stuff is. Exactly. Well, our, our society has already been diagnosed as obese, which means that they're already eating the wrong things. And then this pandemic comes along and then people are getting it. And some people get a little sick, some a little more sick and some unfortunately die. Mm-hmm. There was a study that was conducted. You might call it a survey. Uh, but it was uh, in, I think, June or July of 2019 in New York, where they had the massive uptick. And they had these refrigerator trailers filled with the bodies of the dead. Mm-hmm. What they did was they went through the records to find out how many of these people died from underlying conditions. Um, that uh, you will, you could put it this way, that the virus took advantage of. So they didn't actually die of the virus. They died of the underlying condition. And it turns out 99% of those people who were in those refrigerator cars died from underlying conditions, such as high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, and so forth. So it seems like the stage was set it's almost as if it were intentional to sort of cull the population uh we lost we've lost a million human beings in the united states alone a million people uh and of course now there are a lot of people who are you know they're up in arms we're not going to do anything more that's it we're done i don't care if the pandemic's still on i'm going to do what i'm going to do and so on and so forth and I, I don't blame them for being upset. You know, I'm no fan of putting a mask on. I, I have to fly to Phoenix. I'm going to have to wear a mask on the plane unless, you know, they miraculously drop the uh, mandate. They just did. Oh, did they? Yeah, yesterday or the day before. Wow. Well, then that'd be kind of nice not to have to wear the mask on the plane. But you know what? I'm going to have it with me just in case they say, no, I'm sorry. You got to put it on. Okay. Yeah. I, and that's the other thing, too, is. I bought the plane ticket knowing, hey, this is a private company. That's their rules, not mine. Uh, and uh, if I'm going to get on their plane, I'm going to follow their rules. That's, I mean, you know, I am not going to be on one of those videos <laughs> and then paying 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars in fines for being an unruly passenger. You know, come on, people, get a grip. Uh, these are not public. These are not public air waves, if you will. They are private airplanes, private private trains, private bus companies, et cetera, et cetera. They get to call the shots. The grocery stores that you go into, uh, they may not have the sign there, but it still is implied, no shoes, no shirt, no mask, no service. They can call the shots. So you need to, you need to be aware of that. In any event, it is fascinating how this has all unfolded around the globe. 
I don't know what the the level of death has been in various countries. Whether there's been country, there have been countries that have had more. But then again, maybe there are countries that have had more that have a larger population. Although we're considered, I think, either third or fourth in population around the world. China's number one. I think India's number two. They are all up in the billions, one billion, billion and a half each, I think. And then the United States is like 350 million, or give or take. Um, but again, I don't know what the percentages are in other parts of the world. Uh, but still, a million people. Those are human beings, and I hate it when they start talking about the numbers. They're not numbers. Yeah. You know, I just lost my sister to cancer. I'm sorry. And and uh, uh, she's not a number. She's she's right. my sister. And even if she wasn't my sister, she's still a human being. Right. You know. So people, you know, you need to you need to kind of wake up and and understand that that uh, it's it, you know there's 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 more here that needs to be done to uh, uh, to to make this all. Uh, to make this all, I don't want to say more palatable, more understandable, and hopefully it gets into the ears of the people. But I have to wonder, Doc, if our chemistry is all screwed up, then how do we actually, how are we even able to process this information in such a way as to make, how do I put this, um, beneficial choices for ourselves? If our chemistry is all screwed up and our brains aren't functioning normally, how is that even possible? It's not. Um, it, you know, it, it, you know, th this is obviously a struggle for all of us in different ways. Um, one of the, the, the comments that I would make is, um, you know, they, the numbers are staggering when it comes to the, the human beings who have passed away from COVID in regards to the levels of diabetes and high blood pressure. But then there's also this group of people that are being called healthy, that are, that are passing away or developing chronic COVID symptoms. Well, it gets into what we've been talking about. Your regular doctor isn't going to test you for mold or heavy metals or your gut. So they're going to tell you you're healthy. What I'm finding in people with like long COVID is that they had undiagnosed issues, whether it was with food or their gut or with toxins, that they actually aren't healthy. They, they might feel okay, but their body underlying is inflamed. And if your body underlying is inflamed, you have a, a, a virus that is, takes advantage of us, it, it, it gets very ugly. So I do think that these issues need to be talked about more. Um, you know, I, I'm doing my part and it'll, it'll always be the minority because the, the solution for the overwhelming majority of what I do does not involve medications. And, and so there's, there's not the money and power behind it. But the, uh, to me, people don't know, you know, people can be eating the standard American diet and think they're healthy. And, and then all of a sudden they, they get, you know, they're on a respirator for, uh, for COVID. And it's like, well, I'm, I was healthy. I didn't have any diagnoses. Well, what did your lifestyle look like before that? And, and so I think a lot of people, you know, there's just a lack of understanding around our health um, in regards to what health is and, and, and what is bad for our health, um, in, which is mostly what is good for people's pockets. You've broken your book into two sections, parts one and two, and uh, you've got, uh, uh, I think part two is probably the most significant, especially when you start looking, folks, uh, at some of these recipes. Uh, and that's one of the nice things about it is you're not just offering some solutions, but you're also in turn or, or making people aware of the situation, but you're also offering solutions through the process. Now, I may not be a real fan of this, although I haven't read the whole recipe, don't get me wrong, uh, but you've got some other things in here. There's, um, I, I noticed here, there's a thing, uh, celery juice and John's go-to greens. Uh, you've got some um, grasshopper shake, which is probably not real grasshoppers, ladies and gentlemen, don't get worried. <laughs> No bake almond coconut cookies. Ooh, I like that, especially the coconut part. Uh, then there's herbed oil, lamb and root vegetable stew. I'm just flipping through here, folks. Baked salmon. Oh, oh, you got me already with avocado salsa. I'll take it. Uh, have mine delivered, would you please? Uh, you have uh, Asian slaw. I mean, just it goes on and on. And of course, 
one of my all-time favorites, guacamole. Uh, matter of fact, if you drop me into a vat of, uh, of guacamole or uh, a pureed uh, avocado, don't, don't try to rescue. I'll eat my way out, okay? I will eat my way out. My sweet, favorite food, too. Yeah, sweet potato fries. By the way, I also happen to co-host a program called the Farm to Table Hour, where we talk about farmers markets. Uh, and um, we often talk about uh, uh, these different fruits and vegetables. And I am constantly being undone by, the, by my co-host, uh, Sam Edelman, who is the general manager of the local Santa Barbara County Farmers Markets. Uh, by virtue of the fact that he keeps telling me that, no, Richard, that's a fruit, not a vegetable, or no, Richard, that's not a vegetable, that's a fruit. And I think that's one of the other things that is so fascinating. The tomatoes, fruit. Avocado, fruit. We even went down a laundry list of uh, what I thought were vegetables. And I thought, wouldn't that be interesting if I got a zucchini, a cucumber, a tomato, and an avocado, I sliced them all up, put them in a bowl, and put them in front of my family and said, here's your fruit salad. And I would be 100% accurate, and they would look at me like I was some kind of a nutball. Yeah, for sure. And so you, you start to wonder uh, if, if we don't even know what it is that we're eating. You, you, you were talking about having, uh, what was it, uh, 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 nine servings of, what, fruits and, and or vegetables? Yes. If I just, I want to do fruits, Okay, tomatoes, avocados, zucchini, cucumber. Okay, I got my fruit. Perfect. Uh, but again, it's like, well, well, I might double us both. I, 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 cause I thought there were vegetables. But it's fascinating what we don't know about what we're eating. I, I think it's even more fascinating about the, the stuff that in, in packages that we're putting together that we're we're putting in our mouths or the stuff we pick up from from these fast food places like you you go and order a hamburger and it doesn't actually even have any beef in it um i it's 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 shocking um i mean at least for me like if i look at something that came out of the earth then i'm not gonna i don't particularly care if it's a fruit or a vegetable it's going to be better that something that came out of a deep fryer uh, at my local fast food place Well, we're talking with uh, Dr. Peter Kozlowski and his book. There's a website that goes along with all of this, isn't there? My website is doc-koz.com, D-O-C-K-O-Z.com. And there's a link to get my book there. We will be linked to that website, uh, Doc, so that people can go there, whether they're listening to the uh, podcast or they're watching the video cast. We encourage people to, uh, to do that. Uh, and uh, we certainly encourage people to pick up a copy of Unfunk, F-U-N-C, Unfunk Your Gut. Again, it is a functional medical uh, medicine guide. Uh, this is also the winner of the International Book Award. I'm trying to read the uh, dot com there, but man, they made it small. Uh, but congratulations on that. This is something that um, obviously it helps but it does not uh, increase or decrease the importance of the information that you are trying to impart to people. And I've, I've associated with a number of people down through the years. I remember back in the 80s, um, a chiropractor by the name of Ken Anderson. He, he, was a, he became a good friend. Sadly, he ended up getting arrested because he went down to Mexico to get, uh, I think it was... Oh, what was it? Uh, it was a concoction supposedly to help cancer uh, that came from, was it apricot seeds, something like that? But it was not legal in the United States. Yeah. And so he got caught up in that whole mess trying to help people uh, to deal with their, with their cancers, with their conditions. Uh, and I remember, I still <laughs> talk about a sweet tooth. Uh, I love Snickers bars. And he's in the he's in the studio. We have a glass between us, and he's talking about all of those good things that are good for you. They should that you should be eating. To which I flash up my Snickers bar, and he says, "No, Richard." On the air, he says, "No, Richard. Snickers is not one of uh, one of the things that you should be eating, but it has nuts <laughs> in it." Um, and it's like, "Well, you're nuts." So uh, it's really important for us. Let me ask you, going back to the spiritual aspect, uh, Dr. Kozlowski. 
Um, how important as a doctor, but also as a human being who is trying to better his health as well, how important is our intuition in this process? Huge. Uh, that's I always tell my, my patients, I tell them, you're going to tell me what's wrong with me. You know what's wrong with me, with you. So the, the intuition come, the, the person knows, right? Whether it's a, a parent bringing in their child or the, just themselves bringing in themselves, it, the, the, and the, the person always has the answer. For me, it's just helping them bring it out. But I, I really do believe that, that our, as a physician, our patients know what is wrong with them. They just need a little help figuring it out, that bringing it out. Um, so I do think intuition is, is a huge thing. And then it gets back to like the, the gut brain connection and the gut feeling. Like when your gut is not feeling good about something, it's telling your brain that. And a lot of times we'll power through it and still go through with whatever that decision is that we want to make. But a lot, you know, for a lot of times you feel it in, in your gut and it's like, oh, man, I shouldn't be doing this, but the brain will override it and be like, screw it, we're going to do this. And, and then you end up in, in a bad spot. Um, so I, I, I do believe that, that intuition is a huge part of it. It's almost, I'm going to, I, this is what flashed in my mind. It's almost a comparison. <laughs> it's a horrible comparison, but I'm going to make it <clears throat> to uh, jumping out of an airplane without a parachute, uh, expecting to survive. Now, granted everything up to, but not including the stop. Is, is just fine. You know, it's, you got a little breeze going, that's fine. It, it, but the only problem is, is that when you stop, yeah, it's all over. It really is over. And it's almost as if that's what we have done with our health and well being. Uh, we're doing curative rather than preventative, rather right. than wellness caring. Do you see the medical profession? Has it made the turn yet or is it beginning to make the turn in that regard no and i think even my practice is a great example and to me functional medicine should be preventative medicine when i go around speaking i'll get the question of like hey i'm healthy i feel good why should i see you that's when you should see me what 99 percent of my practice is is people that have been to mayo clinic and cleveland clinic and all their local university hospitals and and they're just not getting better they're on three four five meds and it's like screw it i'm going to try this alternative because i don't have any other choice but it's it's so 99 percent of what i do is is to help people reverse chronic disease but really 99 percent of what i should be doing is to help prevent people from getting sick um, but it's just not, not the world. We, it's not, I, I don't know. I don't really see that shift happening. Um, I still see kind of the same percentages of people that are coming to me for some kind of chronic disease versus how rare it is that someone comes to me as like, Hey, I want to, you know, pre prevent dementia from happening, or I want to help my bones from, from falling apart and getting osteoporosis, or I, I want to prevent getting high blood pressure. It's, my doctor told me that I have to take this med and if this med doesn't work, then I'm basically screwed. And so please, you know, fix this. Yeah. And really, you don't fix anything. The individual is the one you'll facilitate, but it's the individual that has to do the work. I don't do anything. I, I, I just give information and I give guidance, but it, it all comes down to the individual. And that's actually one of the things that I learned early on in my practice is we'll get a lot of times a phone call from a, a wife or a husband or a child that says like, hey, will you see my dad or will you see my, my wife? I want to schedule a visit for them. And we very quickly learned that we had to create a rule of we need to speak to that person first because functional medicine only works if you work it. It works amazingly and it's incredible, the results and the things that people can, can do, but it's all on them. It, 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 it's, there's nothing, I don't have magic pills. I, I can give you guidance, and, and, but then it's up to the person. Yeah. And so that's when people, sometimes people ask me, well, you know, how long before I'm not gonna need my blood pressure meds or how long until I, I completely feel better? I have no clue. It's completely out of my control. Some people walk out of my office and 
follow everything I say and, and then I don't hear from them. Some people don't follow up. They come into my office and then they call three years later and say, I'm worse and uh, I want to try again. I, I want to actually do something. So once someone leaves my office, I have no clue what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but it's all, all we try to do is give the tools and, and, and support for making the right decisions and, and, and getting through some of these tough conditions. Well, it does seem, though, that it's it's literally an uphill climb or uphill battle of sorts, uh, primarily because of the fact that if the chemistry is out of whack, that means the thinking process is out of whack, mental emotional processes are out of whack, in addition to the physical uh, the biology itself is out of whack. Ergo, your spiritual health and well-being is also out of whack. And you're not going to make what we like to talk about, uh, choices. We bring people to choices and knowledge of those choices to help make their dreams come true. But how are you going to do that? It's like my wife and I took, uh, we had a, a black a Vol Volkswagen Jetta. Beautiful, right. beautiful car. And it was a diesel. And we took it to one of these car washes that f would fill up your tank. And when we gave them the keys and said, okay, and it's a diesel, guess what they did? <laughs> they filled it with gasoline. And we left and it went for about 100 feet and stopped running. Now they paid to have it, they had to have the tank flushed and they had to have the whole engine clean and da-da-da-da-da-da. And they paid for that because they screwed up. We told them, diesel. And um, that's basically what's happening right now is that our society is filling their uh, diesel tank with gasoline or vice versa. Or they're putting jet fuel in there thinking, oh, man, that'll really get things rolling. It's jet fuel. Yeah. Uh, and it just won't work. Are you at all optimistic for our uh civilization's health and well-being because it seems to me like our future is dependent upon whether or not each one of us um returns our bodies i love this term i learned back in the 80s uh returns to homeostasis yeah there i i mean it's tough in the grand scheme of things i i'd say i'm a little worried but there's my my world, my functional medicine world can feel really big when I when I'm just in that. But then, like, for example, I remember one day I went to Great America, uh, like the, the amusement park um, and seeing the lines like for funnel cakes and seeing the lines of for just in all the things that, that people are consuming. So I look and, it, you know, it is concerning. But it, but it's not people's fault. Like when you go somewhere and your only option is either nachos or a hot dog, it's like you need to eat. And it, it's not like anybody's making you, a, you know, vegetables over there. And so it's, I don't like, again, I, I don't ever judge or, or anybody for, for making the decisions they do. Cause what's put in front of us is not there. There's nothing that, that is conducive to our health put in front of us. You have to go out and search for it. Yeah. And that that's where I also, you know, I talk a lot of crap about the internet and make fun of it. It's also a gift because there, there there's all these people, my, my practice wouldn't exist without the internet, right? Because in the old days, you go to your doctor, they tell you, you have high blood pressure, take this med and you're like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Now you get told you have high blood pressure. You go online, you start looking, you're like, oh, this person did this, or this person did that. So there, there's some good in it that it, it, it's, there is more, I think the information's easier to obtain now that, that you, if you want to search out and learn more, it's, it's much easier to just not believe everything that, that they tell you. Yeah. And I even see it in the process of like, I had to spend a lot of time and a lot of money to unlearn basically everything that the drug industry taught me, the, mm -hmm. the functional medicine training was basically like reprogramming my brain to look at, you know, not everything they taught me was wrong. I still use components of uh, my traditional medicine training. I also believe that traditional medicine in the acute setting is absolutely amazing. If you're having a heart attack, you don't want me to be talking to you about eating kale. Um, <laughs> you, you want a surgeon to open up your arteries. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to the chronic disease, which is what most people are dealing with, 
it's 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 a disaster out there and everything that we're being fed through traditional means is um it's not beneficial and and so you do have to do that search but luckily that if you do decide to do that um that that search becomes it's easier you can find the information now you can find the support you can find other people that are going through what you're going through mm -hmm. and found an alternative way to heal um so uh it's it's a battle i mean it's always going to be a battle against money and power and and so obviously but people people fight so i mean I, i'm optimistic you know i'm hopeful that people will continue to fight for their health and um you know just learn more not just believe everything you're told all the time and, and consider alternative viewpoints unfunk your gut dr peter kozlowski is my guest here on tell me your story i'm richard dugan your host and we have been uh, talking about what you put down as uh, as as uh, dr kozlowski peter kozlowski has shared with us uh what you put down that uh, gut hole <laughs> I like that, actually, um, uh, is what is going to make the biggest difference. I've said it before, and I will continue to promote what he's saying, uh, may, in my own words, of course, that uh, uh, if you don't put the right uh, elements into the body to help facilitate the uh, chemical uh, compositions that are needed for the functioning of the human body, the human body will stop functioning. And, it's just uh, like your car example that exactly. we're you know we're we're filling our body our bodies with gasoline when they need diesel yeah and by the way diesel actually is i'm not going to say it's more efficient or anything what i do know about diesel versus gasoline it doesn't burn as hot hmm. it, they don't have from what i understand uh, um, a gasoline engine has spark plugs but a uh, a diesel engine has glow plugs the difference you mm. know I, I i don't know the whole thing about it. i hell i i often say that the guy who invented the carburetor had way too much time on his hands anyway uh, and this is going back to the the 50s and 60s you know when they had the carburetor we uh, have uh, uh, uh this is an interesting uh, conversation and we want you to go to doc under is it dot doc dash cause c-o-z d-o-c dash c-o-z k-o-z i'm not what am i saying d-o-c dash k-o-z dot com listen to that man ladies and gentlemen listen to him <laughs> doc dash cause dot com will be linked it'll be spelled correctly i promise you okay. uh, we want you to go to his website to find out more about the work that he is doing and maybe you can connect with him and and get some uh, assistance some support some guidance as well definitely if you can get a copy of his book unfunk your gut uh it's a functional medicine and we hope that you will uh, uh, go to his website and do all of that thing for your physical mental emotional and your spiritual health as well as we continue here on tell me your story i'm richard dugan your host and uh, dr kozlowski i want to thank you so much peter for being with us here on the program i wish we had more time to to converse and maybe we can get you back here because one of the other areas I'd love to discuss with you, in addition to others, is the whole cyclical aspects of growing seasons and why it's important to not just rotate the crops in the field, but rotate the crops going into your gut hole. And I would love for us to talk about that because there's a reason why, if you want to call it grand design or God or whatever, uh, set it up this way because that's the way our bodies, our bodies are like giant filters. And uh, as you go through the seasons, you're not supposed to have bananas 23, uh, uh, 365. You're not supposed to have broccoli 365 or tomatoes or apples or whatever it is. Uh, you know, they come and they go and you should change with the season. So we'll talk about that another time, but I thank you so much for, uh, for sharing with us here today. I really enjoyed this. I, thank you very much for having me.
I have three final questions that I do want to ask you. I ask all of my guests, uh -oh. uh, and uh, we didn't, uh, we didn't, uh, uh, we may have, you may have touched upon them during the program, but I like to ask the questions directly. But before I do ask you these questions, I want to let you, the listener and the viewer, know that you're listening to and watching Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World, as we give you choices and knowledge of those choices to help make your dreams come true. We're here on Sundays at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., Monday mornings at 1 a.m., and we are also on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. for a special edition of Tell Me Your Story, where we stream live at those times at richarddugan.com. We have podcasts at SoundCloud, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, Stitcher, Player FM, Blueberry, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and many other locations. We are on YouTube, where you can watch these interviews, and uh, we will be linked, as I said before, to uh, Dr. Peter Kozlowski's website, uh, which is co. Uh, K, oh my Lord, I can't believe I'm doing this. See, my chemistry's all screwed up, which means I'm not eating right, right? I think that's, that's where that screwed. goes. By the way, side note, I heard from someone that uh, Viagra and similar products actually are supposed to be helpful in uh, reducing the uh, potential effects of, uh, of Alzheimer's. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but I'd heard some, and they were being flat out serious. They really were. They were being very serious about it. And I thought it caused more blood to flow, which would cause more oxygen to get to the brain that, that could potentially be an anti-inflammatory thing. If your vessels are constricted, I, I, I could, again, I, I try to make sense of things and that, yeah. but that, that doesn't sound too crazy to me. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm all for that, you know, uh, but, but back to uh, the fact that we are here, uh, podcasts, video casts, and we also encourage you to participate in the decade of perfect vision, the 2020s, where we ask you to go within and listen to that still small voice. It will also guide you. Uh, Dr. Peter Kozlowski will guide you too if you want to connect with him. But I'll tell you, perfect vision, you're going to get it from your inner voice, that inner guidance, if you will. That's where it is. And it's also good to just kind of stop and relax and calm yourself, reduce the stress. That'll, that'll help as well in terms of your overall well-being. And then if you'd like to, and you find these programs interesting, informative, they resonate with you, and you'd like to be a part of what we're doing, we have a PayPal account. It's for your, for your security as well as ours. If you'd like to support the work we're doing financially, we would greatly appreciate that. And thank you, thank you, thank you to those who have and to those who will help us out financially. Thank you very much. We greatly appreciate it. With that, I want to ask you, uh, our guest here on the program, the first of three questions. Who is Peter Kozlowski? Uh, I would say a recovering addict, a husband, uh, a dad to two amazing bulldogs, and, and someone who's just trying to, out, to be out there helping people. Doing my best one day at a time. What is it that you hope to or want to achieve through the work that you are doing now? I, I just I think our greatest job as physicians is, is as educators, right? And, and nobody taught me the, the stuff that I learned through functional medicine and in traditional medicine. And I don't think that's fair. And, and so if I'm not learning it going through medical school, the regular person watching TV is not, not learning it either. So I, I just want people to think about their health in a different way, or just even think about it at all. Um, and just give people the, the, I share what worked for me, right? Like my, my life, um, you know, has turned around and, and, um, magical things have happened. I've seen magical things happen with so many patients and, uh, it, I just don't feel like that information's out there enough. So I, my goal would be is just to keep spreading it. Mm. And finally, what is your life's purpose? I think to to be a good husband to my wife, mm. and, and and just uh, live with God. Well, Dr. Peter Kozlowski, I want to thank you again for joining us here on the program. The information uh, that you have available uh, here on this program, as well as your website, and of course your book, Unfunk Your uh, Unfunk Your Gut. We hope people will get a copy of it and uh, find out more about the work that you are doing and get involved in their own health and well-being. And again, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.
I'm Richard Dugan. This has been Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World, where we're giving you choices and knowledge of those choices to help make your dreams come true. I think this really applies here where we are looking for those new ways of living. All you have to do is look around. The old ways don't work. It's time to look into some new ways of living. Until our next broadcast, podcast, videocast, love to Lal and Jeanette. I'll be listening.